So uh, this is coded excitation uh, reconstruction using uh, implemented through impulse response estimation and retrospective transmission and beamforming. And if you're, I will just mention that uh, computationally, if anyone has questions, that there's an earlier paper, uh, a similar technique applied to ocean acoustic channels with <coughs> uh, for telemetry uh, experiments. Uh, so the goal is to have efficient coded excitation synthetic transmitted aperture uh, without pulse compression side lobes. Um, and we're going to have this idea of uh, multiple trans simultaneous transmit and simultaneous channels. So I'll, we'll show how that can lower the mechanical index uh, achievable and get a higher frame rate than isolated channel uh, synthetic transmit aperture uh, with, for example, Golay coding. Um, and also it would uh, enable some uh, tissue motion estimation processing. So uh, we'll focus on comparing it to this uh, Gole complementary pair uh, method of addressing coded excitation, and there are a couple other techniques that we're not, I'm not going to compare it to at, at this time. Uh, so basically the idea is transmit on individual channels, uh, but simultaneously. Uh, it could be a sparse uh, aperture, uh, each receiving a BPSK code that we're just using a, a, a random uh, generation tool to, to create, so they're not optimizing any uh, uh, mathematical sense. Um, and once they're ran, once they're generated, we treat them as as known, so they're not really random at that point. So use this as a channel probing sequence, and then uh, estimate using a model based uh, uh, estimation procedure all the impulse responses from the transmit to each of the received channels. So again, this could be a sparse transmit. Uh, they could also be expanded apertures, so they could be somewhat focused, partially focused, or uh, however you would choose. And, and then, so once we get the impulse responses, we uh, retrospectively use those by transmitting um, waveforms in, in, uh, after the fact and, and transmit beamforming and receive beamforming all in this model. So to build up this model, it's, it's worth mentioning that you obviously get a topic structured convolution matrix uh, that's filled with the, the way we're designing this is the BPSK uh, code symbols actually are what go, to, go in here, not the, not the voltage values that we're transmitting. So we're incorporating all the impulse response of the transducer uh, and the pulser all in, uh, round trip into, uh, into the impulse response of the media um, by this model. So all that's in here is uh, basically uh, plus or minus ones in the case of BPSK. And, and then there's a, we have to excise this model because the receiver blanking, uh, we, we can't receive at this time. So that truncates this into the lower quadrant. Uh, and it's still, uh, it's ill-conditioned, but it's, uh, it's a fat matrix, but it's still an unbiased model for the, for the measurements. Um, so then if we're using the linear statistical model with deterministic scattering, we only have uh, the thermal noise as the, as the only stochastic part. And the rest of the, uh, the information here, the model and the impulse response we want are modeled as deterministic. Uh, there's another model we could use, but it's more appropriate for, for perhaps blood flow and that'd be having a, a random scattering model, <coughs> excuse me, random scattering model. Uh, but there's some issues with that. Uh, it's kind of tricky to do that kind of regularization. But uh, at the point of this slide is we can take a, for the linear statistical model, get a, a Using the Fisher information, we get a covariance estimate for the, the estimate, a covariance of the estimates. And so we'll use that to evaluate against different models uh, and predict what our performance should be. So, and then the second step in this is to, uh, just to point out, everybody knows it, is uh, transmit and receive beamforming is all models linear operators on the impulse response. So that this A here includes the transmit uh, retrospective waveforms, which in our case are just delayed uh, uh, Kronecker deltas. Uh, you could also use uh, other uh, waveforms uh, retrospectively like uh, equalized pulse shapes to compensate for transducer bandwidth and, and that's in our, uh, the paper we have. Uh, I won't talk about that further today. So uh, just to give an example with uh, comparing to dynamic uh, receive focus, 128 ray lines and this uh, code excitation is uh, 18 uh, sparse 18 transmit aperture and uh, 54 transmissions, a 64 link, uh, codes are 64 cycle long and it's nine volts versus 50 volts. So this uh, dynamic focus uh, algorithm is focused at 148 down here. Uh, 
And then there we see you have the I, pretty much identical main lobe response, uh, but um, several like five or eight dB better clutter rejection than the uh, than the dynamic focus. Uh, and then if you go up a ways uh, closer in, what's out of focus uh, for the dynamic receive, we're still focusing very well to synthetic transmit aperture, operating on the coded excitation estimates of the impulse response, and at least 20 dB. Uh, suppression of side lobes that we see in the dynamic uh, receive focus. And then another uh, view of the phantom with this uh, same dynamic focus algorithm, uh, let's see, focused early, uh, sooner, uh, uh, near rather, uh, right in the center of this uh, void. And comparing those two, it's a little bit hard to tell, um, but we can see you get about six uh, dB of better uh, uh, contrast resolution inside the, the void with the coded excitation reconstruction. Uh, and then we can't even see uh, the, the dynamic focus doesn't even pick up this deeper void at all. So that's a little anecdotal, but uh, just, and then another uh, comparison to synthetic transmit aperture, uh, conventional pulses, is just to show that in the near field, we, or near in, we can get uh, the same main lobe response so it basically, it, it does focus uh, everywhere like synthetic transmit aperture uh, should. So then we'd like to look at the, uh, what, what's the effect of increasing the number of channels we process uh, simultaneously or transmit simultaneously and what does that effect have on the precision? So um, it turns out if we normalize for equal energy per frame, you know, the precision is about the same for these but we're reducing uh, the transmit voltage by the square root of the number of uh, channels that are uh, shot simultaneously. Uh, so that has a, some uh, implications for if there's tissue motion, uh, how many of these do you want to transmit on simultaneously? Uh, initially, we have been using the, the entire uh, transmit aperture that whether sparse or not was, uh, was being used. Um, and then we tried the smaller apertures to see if it would behave differently in tissue motion. But so anyway, comparing with uh, a Golay synthetic transmit aperture, which is taking two pulses of the complementary pairs, and uh, th that's a property that the side lobes would cancel if they're summed. And y you can actually use a Golay codes then in the linear model that we're using. Uh, it does uh, basically the same thing it does with the autocorrelation, but it's an unbiased estimate. So uh, for comparing this with different number of channels on the multi-channel uh, coded excitation, uh, and again, it's just a single channel per, per uh, transmission for the Golay STA. So there's a little bit of loss from not using the, submitted, the optimal codes uh, that increases with the number of channels uh, that we use. But if you look at uh, mechanical index margin, there's a, a significant gain that we get by going to more and more channels. So if your mechanical index limited, you can increase the voltage uh, get more power by six and a half dB just by getting eight more channels compared to the Golay STA. So that would be a significant increase in sensitivity if you were mechanically index limited uh, in that case. If you're power limited, then the Golay is still, because of the better coding, it's, it's still better. So you look at these different scenarios with clutter limited, frame rate limited, mechanical index limited, or voltage, power limited, then uh, by the flexibility you get by transmitting in multiple codes at different channels and then uh, kind of amortizing the extra transmission required by Golay over all those channels, then we can get either cases of uh, increased number of transmit channels in the clutter limited case, uh, reduced number of bursts per sub aperture so we get uh, uh, twice the frame rate in this uh, frame limited case or we can get more power in the mechanical index limited case. And then the, the Golay again is uh, in the power limited case for the Golay. But I, I'm just thinking through how that would happen and how would you have power limited single transmit aperture. Uh, uh, it, it seems like you would have started out, uh, why didn't you just use a, a higher voltage if that was the case and then you get twice the frame rate. Well, there some, must have been some limit that was hit. So it may actually be trying to get around a, a, a voltage limit. So. Uh, I'm not sure how, if anyone wants to ask me about this later, I, I'd be happy to hear your opinion. Uh, so a couple of examples with the carotid artery. Uh, 
the, the top case is transmitting 48 uh, sparse aperture events, 24 cycle codes, uh, uh, excuse me, 38 transmit elements and 48 events. Of, um, and then compared to the bottom here is, uh, so this is one kind of shot, multiple bursts. This is uh, on the bottom is uh, eight elements at a time and we have 12 sub apertures and there are 10 bursts per sub aperture. And uh, I thought it would actually perform better to do that against tissue motion, but it looks like the way the averaging goes, is it all the time up? Okay, uh, let's see. So we have a, another example of that. Uh, another example of even uh, reducing the mechanical index further with uh, sparse, uh, time sparse transmits as well. And this is, uh, we can collect uh, several uh, or many uh, pulses together with interspersed with uh, listening periods. In fact, we can listen to the entire time of transmitting uh, 250 pulses tr uh, spread out over a long time period. And then we can image in the near field over uh, through what you could not normally do from the blanking period using the same uh, estimation structure. Uh, well, I had a, a Doppler example, but I'm going to have to let that be in the paper. Uh, so any, any questions?